Hey everyone, welcome back to the third Cataclysm devlog. It's me, Millipede, and since the last devlog I've been working on AI pathfinding and general AI behaviour, because the old AI systems weren't really anything to be proud of, and well, I'm really happy with the result, even though it took absolutely ages to make. Anyway, now it's time to share all my progress with you guys, even if this devlog might be a bit boring, because well, AI pathfinding is not the most exciting devlog content ever. I'll try my best to keep it interesting though. Luckily, it's not all AI, there's some cool stuff closer to the end, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video. It was a lot of work writing the script and editing, and hopefully it's worth it. I'd be happy if this provided at least some entertainment value. So, let's get into the video. The original Cataclysm pathfinding was pretty terrible. Actually, it was non-existent. If you haven't played or seen pre-2.0, well, enemies just walked in a straight line. That was for the most part fine, because that version of the game had no need for complicated AI pathfinding code, but pathfinding is very important to this version of the game, because the levels will have actual obstacles now, so no pathfinding would be, well, impractical would be a massive understatement, which is why I need to add it. Cataclysm uses the A-star pathfinding algorithm to find the shortest path from point A to point B. I'll briefly explain it. It's not going to be the greatest explanation ever, just how the algorithm works, but I'll put some links in to resources in the description if I remember. Alright, so essentially the world is split up into a grid. Our pathfinding agent, who we'll call Henry, has to find his way from point A to point B, avoiding all obstacles. Let's do some calculations. First, we take the squares around Henry. Each of these squares has three variables we must consider. G, H, and F. G is the distance to the goal, H is the distance from the start point, and F is simply the total. We calculate the F value of all surrounding squares from their start point, and we pick the lowest one. Then we calculate all squares surrounding that, and find the square with the lowest f value out of every square, every square, not just the ones we just calculated then, and then we repeat that until we find the path for Henry, and that is how the pathfinding works. Congratulations on making it through probably the most boring part of the video. Fun fact! If you combine AI pathfinding and nothing, you get a terrible AI enemy. Which is why I will only be combining AI pathfinding and nothing for one of the enemies. Sort of. Anyway, so the AI behavior in this game is actually relatively simple. There's this thing I call AI states, and they are just different states the AI can be in. In Cataclysm, for basic AI we have two main AI states, wonder and attack. In the wonder AI state, we simply find a random spot nearby and pathfind to it, when we get there, we wait a small period of time and then move somewhere else. The attack AI state is a little different, because we know where the player is, so we can just pathfind towards them. The actual logic behind this, as well as the attack function, varies between different behaviours, but it's usually some variation of move towards player, if within X units of player, attack the player. Except it's not actually that, because if it was, I would get like 80,000 different compiler errors. But, um, anyway. At this point, most of Beta 2.0 was in place. We had player movement, combat, enemy health, and AI. However, there wasn't really a game in the game. So I devised a brand new action shooter video game, where it's basically just pre 2.0 but worse. I implemented a new wave system, except no waves, it's just constant enemies. They spawn every 3 seconds and get stronger by every every 5 enemies that spawned. By get stronger, I mean their power level is increased by 1. Amazing. There were also a few bug fixes, random tweaks and stuff, and also a completely new feature called cheat mode, which wasn't really a cheat mode, you basically just got some um, chaos variant weapons, which weren't really chaos variant weapons, they were just shot purple projectiles and were slightly stronger. They weren't... yeah, they weren't amazing. And on the 13th of April 2022, 
the update was completed. For the first time in over 250 days, an update had been uploaded to itch.io. But you might be thinking, wait, if the update was released in April, has it taken you an entire month to make this video? Yeah, it has taken me an entire month to make this video. Also, in that time I released another update. Something that has been lacking from my game since I started making games in Unity about 4 years ago is UI. This is because I am not a UI designer, as you can tell by the beta 1.4 UI and the beta 1.3 UI. In late 2021, I managed to create, somehow create, some really nice looking UI for my multiplayer shooter experiment, Power Lost. I still really like this UI, but I wasn't able to create anything that looked good and fit with the darker, eerie theme I was going for with the title screen for Cataclysm. So, I just went with something else. I'd been replaying Hollow Knight recently, so I took some inspiration from that. It took a couple of days designing the background and general UI elements, as well as adding and implementing the different menus, but overall I'm pretty happy with the results. With the current systems, you can't cycle backwards on multi-option elements though, which is really annoying, but hopefully it shouldn't be too difficult to fix in a future version. Like, I already have an idea of what I could do to allow cycling backwards. Anyway, um, this version, I also added a lot of quality of life and polish just to make the game more fun. There's now sound effects for more or less everything, and a few extra keybinds and an option to allow the player to toggle sprint instead of holding down shift, and also heaps more stuff. I also added status effects and power-ups. Power-ups are a fun little addition to the infinite game mode which spawn every 45 seconds and can give the player some positive status effects. There's four from poisoning which poisons all enemies to regeneration which heals you slowly over time. Overall, for an update that was just meant to polish up the game a bit ready for beta 2.1, this has been a pretty massive update. So, what next? Well, the first area, the Crimson Forest, heaps of new content and all the systems I missed in the last two updates. This includes new weapons, new gear, actually designing the art, new enemies, new boss fight, etc. I think my plan of attack will be to add all the new content in sections, so overhaul the weapon system, then add new weapons, add the cores system, then add a bunch of cores, you get the idea. Also, for all you beta testers, experimental updates are a thing now if you somehow haven't seen the 8 different announcements in the Discord server. You can now mess around and give feedback on some of the new features while they are still in development. If you aren't a beta tester, but you would like to be one, just join my Discord server and ask, I'll help you become one. There will be a link in the description if I remember. Anyway, thank you so much everyone for watching this video. I've spent way too long working on this script, and I am dreading tomorrow because I have to record the voiceovers and record the background footage and edit the video and make the thumbnail in a single day, but if this video is out on or before the 23rd of May 2022, you'll know I've done it. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next devlog, which hopefully won't be in 4 months. Bye!